in the words of the head coach. Florida State winning the toss deferring to the second half. The Tigers will have the football first. And they'll start off first down and 10 from their own 25 yard line. Q, a different quarterbacking story for Florida State this week. Yeah, as DJ Uyongale is out, he will not play. Brock Glenn will make the third career start. Remember, he was the quarterback last year in the ACC championship, the win over Louisville, and then they lost in the Orange Bowl 63 to 3. Glenn makes his third start. This is the first time he's had an entire week to prepare. His numbers are dismal, but he's excited. He's got great energy. Meanwhile, you're taking your first look at Cade Klubnik, the ACC's most improved player, was on fire with the deep ball last week, and he can get out of the pocket and sting it with his speed. Responsible cue for four touchdowns in that win. First and ten for the Tigers. They're going to keep it between the tackles. Phil Moffa will aim about two hard yards. Blake Nicholson, one of the better stories defensively for the Seminoles, making the tackle on the play. There's been so much improvement for Cade Klubnik this year, as Q said. Probably the most improved player in the ACC last week, responsible for five touchdowns, mm. fourth of the year, one on the ground. Looking to pass on second and eight into the flat. Completes it to Maffa, who's going to be pushed out of bounds. About three yards short of that first down third down and three coming up Brown making the tackle on the play for Florida State. This is where Florida State has to be great third downs on both offense and defense. They've got Clemson in a third and short. See what Clemson decides to go to early on and how much Florida State challenges these receivers. Look at the numbers efficiency wise on third down this year for the Tigers. Williams in motion their leading receiver and the pass is incomplete so the Seminoles defense will get off the field Brian Wesco couldn't squeeze that pass he's one of the more prolific freshmen in the ACC but instead it'll be a quick three and out for the Tigers it felt like Wesco and Klubnik just not on the same page Klubnik expecting Wesco when he turned outside to sort of take a step outside he was trying to lead him that way. Meanwhile, Wesco just sat down in the soft spot in the zone. Either way, Florida State gets off the field on its first third down. Adam Swanson punting from his own 17 yard line. We're going to have a little motion up front. Ball start. Zero on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, fourth down. It's against Barrett Carter, one of the Veteran leaders for the Tigers. Mike Norvell, meanwhile, in his fifth season on the sidelines, undefeated a season ago. And off to a rocky one and four start. He was very upbeat all week in practice. At the 28 yard line, Lewayne McCoy is brought down immediately. It'll be first and 10 from there after that 46 yard punt for quarterback Brock Glenn who actually started the ACC title game a season ago, went 8 of 21 in that game, but unique in the sense that this is the first time, Roddy, that he's had an opportunity to prep an entire week knowing for sure he was going to be the QB1. Before that ACC championship game, Tate Rodemaker still going through concussion protocol. Before the Orange Bowl, Tate Rodemaker still in the mix until he decided to transfer late before that Orange Bowl trip. But Brock Glenn a more mobile quarterback that really isn't afraid of the moment. First and ten. Pulls it out on the RPO incomplete over the middle had Jakai Douglas their leading receiver the intended target he's trying to improve on these numbers and well some impotence right there showing offensively for Florida State offensively. It, I mean, it really is. There's no it, other way to say it. And that's why the, the common refrain has been it's not just been on the quarterback to improve these offensive numbers. But Brock Glenn on that first play, Mike Norvell said he might be a little amped up. That time he overthrows it. They'd had a big play if he'd, he'd have been able to hit Ja'Kai Douglas. Second and ten. Three receivers out to the top of the screen. Glenn checks it down. Cole Feely 
made one guy miss. And they're going to spot it at the 31 yard line, a pickup of three on the play. There was a missed tackle by Wade and Woodaz. And there's a look at DJ Uyilungaloy. Out because of an injury, obviously had a procedure on his hand wearing that club like cast. And that soft cast that would let you, would, would make you think that there's been some sort of procedure on that hand, as you said. We'll see how long he's out, but until then, Brock Glenn in a big third down here. On third down and seven. We talked about trying to make it a little bit easy for him to start the game. Glenn under duress. He's going to be sacked. Back at the 25 yard line, Barrett Carter atoning for that procedure penalty a moment ago gets the sack on the play, and it's a three and out for Florida State. It's good coverage on the back end, but really the pass rush collapses the pocket around Block Glenn, so he has nowhere to move up in the pocket. So he's trying to trying to climb, trying to find some space to be able to deliver the football. So nice job by Clemson. Integrity in the rush lanes, keeping the quarterback in the pocket. Alex Mastromano punting from his own 12 yard line. Antonio Williams back deep for the Tigers calls for the fair catch at the 25 where it'll be first and 10 for Clemson in their first road test in four weeks. That crane index that is a metric used to track the operating cranes in cities or universities. You know the economic sentiment here in Tallahassee is positive. Yeah, that is true. That's facts. You when you look at the skyline here being pierced by all of the construction and the cranes and such, uh, it really speaks to the investment that they're making here in college football and beyond. And I think Florida State fans would tell you that it's long overdue. The amenities that they'll have in that football only facility are going to be tremendous and it's going to help on the recruiting trail and for their current players. Second and eight. Pass is caught at the 32 yard line. Stellato. They're rebuilding the West Stands on the press box side to provide more ample premium seating, new restrooms, and concession facilities. They're going to have some suites on the field level. It's going to be super nice. But for now, you see the aluminum temp temporary seating with, with a, a vast vacancy capacity of this stadium down to 55,000. But judging from the noise tonight, Jonesy, they're bringing it. Oh, yeah. You can hear them right now. Third and three. The pass is complete for the first down to Troy Stellato. And here's what it's going to look like once construction is complete. It's going to be beautiful. The only thing is you can't make those field level suites too nice. <laughs> yeah. Here's Klubnik with a nice run out near midfield. Slides in right at midfield. Hey, you can't be balling on a budget. I mean, right. You make them that nice and uh, <laughs> people aren't going to want to sit in their seats. But how about Kate Klubnik on this one, the fake and then the cutback. This is I think he's really improved even since week one with his ability on the ground to be decisive in his cuts and his reads. His legs have always been a big weapon, but the way he has used them has been so improved since week one. So I'm run for a touchdown last week and the week before that against North Carolina State pulled away from a lot of defenders. Turn on the field was the first down was achieved on the previous play. Game clock was shot at my signal. So the nose of the ball is at the 48 yard line. It'll be first down and 10. So where they, they marked the ball, it was kind of borderline, but they ruled that it was a first down, so they had to reset the chains, get them moved, and now we're off and running. They've gotten Klubnik to commit to those deep throws as Williams goes in motion on the jet sweep, turns the corner, and picks up another first down for Clemson. Got a nice block. By Bringenstool on the edge, Roddy, an 11 yard gain. That's a part of Jake Bringenstool's game that's really improved a ton. He's on the right side of your screen against Azaria Thomas, the excellent corner for Florida State, but just gets enough of them, pushes him enough down the field to let Antonio Williams turn the corner and get the first down.
from the 41. And hand it off to Maffa. Let's go back to the studio. Personal foul, face mask, defense number seven. 15 yards comes to be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Sorry, I'm not sure I heard all of what Matt said, but I think he said it was 40 to 28. <laughs> I, I had to, I had to double check. Okay. Uh, did, did uh, look our guy Matt Barry's on yeah, top of it, and they yeah. got the best crew in the business in the studio, but that can't wow. be right, can wow. it? No. A week after that incredible and thrilling comeback against Georgia, Bama on the ropes. First and ten. Stilato, Stilato hit right away by Brown. I like Cade Klubnik's decision making. He hasn't really thrown the ball downfield, but it's been all short stuff. Little hooks up and zone coverage, finding receivers. That time, got a blitzer off the edge, through right behind the blitz. Very nice job by Klubnik. Second and five. Brendan Stuhl splits out. Little RPO and Klubnik going to be dragged down at about the 17 yard line. Great pursuit on the play by Cam Riley, the Auburn transfer. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by AT&T. Yeah, that score is correct. 40 to 28, folks. Alabama trailing Vanderbilt as is the one at number nine Missouri losing big down Bryan College Station it's Texas A&M got a flag down at the field Texas A&M is a different team since their early season loss too they are you got Connor Wigman back today Mike Elko very fired up when talking about his quarterback in the post game offside Defense number 11 causing the offense to react. A five drive comes to the result in the first down. He and Patrick Payton and Joshua Farmer both jumping off sides, causing the offensive player to react. Kate Klubnik was about to take a shot down yeah. the field, knowing he had a, a free play. His biggest improvement, coaches say, has been his decisiveness and making plays with his legs. We've seen a lot of that. They keep it on the ground. Moffa straight ahead will pick up about three with his forward progress. Phil Moffa, big bruising back, 6'1, 230 pounds last week against Stanford, ran 10 times for 58 yards. At 58 yards is a season low, and Dabo Sweeney talked about the fact that they needed that run game to be much better this week against a stout Florida State front. Wesco split wide to the top of your screen, the talented freshman. Stilato in motion. They come the other way. Incomplete at the seven. As Klubnik fires high for Troy Stilato. It'll be third and seven coming up. Third and seven. Klubnik into the end zone, incomplete, and no flag on the play. That is a win for the Seminoles defensively. Thomas defending Wesco.
This is what the sounds of the crowd and the band were doing to Cade Klubnik, having to cover his ears, the ear holes to hear the in-helmet communication. Garrett Riley relaying the play to him. Florida State doing a nice job in that situation of not giving the receivers any space and forcing an errant throw. Nolan Hoosier into an attempt this field goal from 26 yards out. And he knocks it through to make it 3-0 for the Tigers. Klubnik getting his team all the way inside the red zone, but unable to get a touch. Category 4 storm. It veered east by about 10 miles, sparing both Florida State and the immediate communities around here. Well, that same storm visited Clemson, South Carolina, shutting off power while we were there a week ago. Players and coach Dabo Sweeney lost power in his house. Wes Goodwin did also. Their offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley telling me pregame that yesterday the power finally went on. It's wow. amazing how you appreciate the simple things. Hopefully we can just be a little bit of an elixir, a remedy to bring a little joy in. A little receiver screen, pass complete to Williams on the edge. How do they make things easy here or easier for Brock Glenn, Roddy? I think first and foremost, it's guys making plays when he, they have quick passes like that and running the football. They have not run the ball well at all this year. One of the worst teams in the country in yards per carry. Running the football is a big help. Second down, four to go. Sideline communication shutting off now with 15 seconds to go. Quarterbacks with those communication systems in their helmets. High snap. And the play goes absolutely nowhere. They'll actually lose a few yards on the play. Jaheim Lawson there to make the tackle. And it sets up a third and long on the loss of three. The snap throws off the timing of this. I'm not sure had it been a good snap though. Jaheim Lawson doesn't blow it up just like he did. He was coming screaming off of that edge. Looks like he knew the play call. Man. Make the tackle in the backfield. This is how you make it hard on your quarterback. Third and sevens where Wes Goodwin can get into some of those exotic blitzes. A lot of people hanging out around the line of scrimmage. Brock Glenn's got to figure out the coverage. How many people are coming and where to deliver the football. Glenn gets rid of it. Pass complete out to the 29-yard line. Williams, pardon me, Tofili made the catch. Brought down immediately by Khalil Barnes. And it's another quick three and out for the Seminoles on offense. So they'll have to punt it away. Tough to get behind the chains. You're going to lose yards. Yeah, you're going to have to avoid those negative plays. You have to stay on schedule. Florida State, it was a massive struggle for them last week on third downs. Three of seven already over their first two today. Mastromano perched at his own 14. Florida State takes its first time out of the half. Mike Norvell going to burn his first time out of the first half in this trying season for the fifth year head coach of the Seminoles. Back with more in just a minute. Coming up tonight at 10.30 Eastern time here on ESPN, number eight Miami, the Hurricanes out in Berkeley, California, the jewel of the Bay Area, taking on three and one Cal. Great Cal. scene out there this morning at the uh, countdown. Right? How about the kid hitting the field goal oh, in the van? Yeah, yeah. Daniel, anytime legend. You gotta, anytime you got to write a check and give some money away, it's a good thing. Mastromano, there's a flag down on the punt. Williams feels it his own 20 found an alley still on his feet and returns it 23 yards out to the 43 for the Tigers after the 52 yard punt but let's see what this flag is all about here. There is no foul for legal motion on the play he first out the Clemson. Hey time now for our Aflac trivia question. I've got no clue. I think I have an answer. I think I have I think. Andre Johnson's big catch, Rose Bowl, 
the last that one of their national regular championships. That was regular season, though. It said regular season, right? Was it regular season? Oh, that's right, regular season. Ah, oh, I know. I think they played the Huskies, Washington, out on the West Coast. Toss into the boundary, Mafa. Brought down at the 43-yard line. When would that have been? You got a guess on the year? Hey, man, a squirrel's got to get a nut once in a while. That's, I'm just taking a guess. I think it was. Had a squad back then. Looking at second and nine for Clemson. Klubnik with plenty of time. Found his man in the seam. It's caught. Williams, touchdown, Clemson. Fifty seven yards on the strike. The catch and run. And it's six nothing for the Tigers. Kate Klubnik has an eternity, but this is like a it's like old 7-10 split when you're at the yeah. bowling alley. You hit the one pin, it yeah. hits the other pin, and your bowling ball goes right into yeah. the end zone. Make that 10 nothing, not 6 nothing. Really, the earlier field goal. But another big play, Roddy, from Antonio Williams. Underscores how much more explosive these Clemson receivers are this year. And in the first quarter, they have been near picture perfect this season. And it, it's been a really big thing for them to have these hot starts. Look at all the time that Cade Klubnik's got. And then on the back end for Florida State, it's one thing to give up the catch, but you got to be able to play another down. You got to get the player down. You yeah, Hussey and Cypress, the second, ran into each other. Conrad Hussey goes in with the shoulder trying to knock him down. You, you got to wrap him up. He's the first guy there, yeah. and he knocks Fentrell Cypress off the tackle. It's kind of indicative of how this Florida State yeah. season has gone. Klubnik. Threw a great pass there. You know, he was talking earlier this week. Listen to him talk about how helpful those iPads have been to be able to see things and make corrections and adjustments in real time. Now a quick word from Verbo. Defenses so far have been stingy, and that really showed in the... Done? Look, if you want a house without a host, you should have booked a Verbo. Like I was saying, both teams have really good defenses, and it really showed in the second half. Coach is really immersed in his acting. I can I can tell the I can see a marked improvement from the earlier one. No kidding, <laughs> and and eager. <laughs> He's on every commercial we air. You're right. I mean, yeah, right. I was all over the place. Good for Coach Saban. The Nick Saban work network. Right. First down and ten. Brock Glenn making his first start at quarterback for Florida State. Gets it out quickly, complete on the receiver screen, and a big hit made on Ja'Kai Douglas, Seminoles leading receiver, a gain of two, and a near Pyrrhic result. It's actually Darius Washington that his delivers that big hit. 76 is the one that lowered the boom. Wow. Ja'Kai Douglas, 5'9", 195. If he's 5'9", I'm six foot. <laughs> Darius Washington, 6'4", 3'10". If he's 3'10", uh, he a little bit more than 310. Sure look looks like, like, it. like it. Second down and eight. Glenn going to hand it off to Tofili. And he's brought down right near the line of scrimmage by Terrell. No gain on the play, setting up a third down. How do you get your quarterback in rhythm here and have him confident on this third and long? Well, I think you, you've got to move the pocket some. He's done a nice job on the run. You're going to give him a look at the defense. I'd expect him to do a check with me so Mike Norvell can help get him into the best play. Five seconds before they shut off that sideline communication in his helmet. Blitz coming. He got it off in time. Little contact downfield. And flags in the vicinity. Looked like Glenn made a nice read to get it out. He saw the pressure coming, huh? He, he had to. It was bearing right down on him. He had Khalil Barnes screaming up the middle. Look at seven right here. Right up the middle on Brock Glenn. Pass interference. Defense number five. 59 Kofi automatic. First down. 
And on the back, Sherrod Koval ends up with the tug on the jersey. But hey, look, that's a conversion for yeah. Florida State. You move the change, you get to play another down. From the 42. Sentinel's team has not scored over 21 points in a game all season. Taking another shot downfield. Couldn't get separation. The ball might have been underthrown a little bit. Lucas defending against Portier. Yeah. Hakeem Williams, or excuse me, Kentron Portier just fades too early towards the sideline. That ball's thrown over his outside shoulder, but because he fades towards the sideline, it ends up on the inside, and Jaden Lucas is able to make the play. We were talking this week about, and Roddy, you so accurately pointed out the nuances of being able to create space downfield on the toss, nowhere to go into the boundary for Cam Davis. Okay, so Roddy, you explained that when the ball's in the air, there's a lot of important things that the receiver has to do to get separation. I'm the defender, you're the receiver. How does it look? Quarterback's in there, right. so if, if, if we're running down the field, and the ball is thrown right here. If I fade outside, now that ball goes from out here to in here. That's what just happened. Right. And Jaden Lucas is able to make the play. If I meet force with force, you're pushing on me, I'm pushing on you, and I wait until the last minute. Now I can fade away from the football mm. and make an accurate catch. That's what these receivers have to do, and that's something that you learn over the course of time. Take a little space, and there's an interception. Picked off Terrell. And the Tigers with the game's first turnover, they'll start with great field position on the Seminole side of midfield. That's his second pick of the season. I mean, so it, the, the interception is going to happen to the top of the screen. Go ahead and run it, guys. And it looks like Brock Glenn frees it right here. Brock Glenn thinks that this receiver is going to be in here. There's nobody around in the area where he throws it. And it's the easiest interception for any defensive back. It's uncontested. A young quarterback not being on the same page as his receiver. And Avion Terrell, I mean, he's looking like, wow. hey, man, I'll, I'll take it. Didn't even have to use the QR code to get the free gift that time. Mike Norvell trying to coach up his young quarterback. Downfield, Klubnik incomplete. At the 18-yard line intended for Bryant Wesco. Working against Thomas, one of their better cover corners. Wesco with great speed and a big-time recruit out of Texas. His dad and mom both great athletes back in the day. A couple of track stars. He might be their fastest receiver, too. The bloodlines are there. You know, he's got to learn some of that stuff that we were just talking right. about. Meeting force with force with the defender holding that line that you're on and then fading at the last minute. Kate Klubnik didn't really give him a chance there. The ball thrown out of bounds. Klubnik going to use his legs here on the option. Made a great move and put his hat down and made it down to the 35 and he's slow to get up. Ran over Kirkland who made the stop but Klubnik a little wobbly and slow to get up after the 14 yard gain. I'm not on the field for an injured play of the offense. Leads with that shoulder and just a little shaken up, it, it looked like. We have our rules analyst, Matt Austin, joining us right now. Matt, tell us about this hit and your evaluation of it. Well, the runner in this case is not defenseless because he's still trying to gain yardage. Uh, it looks like the, the defender went in with his forehead to the shoulder, so I don't think there's any targeting concerns here, but uh, it certainly was close. And Matt Clemson, obviously they stopped the game to, for Cade Klubnik to exit. It doesn't look like he's going to come back in, but Clemson called a timeout. Would that allow Cade Klubnik to play the next play because Clemson called the timeout after the stoppage? No, anytime you have an injured player, he has to sit out for one play no matter what. All right, Matt, that's a great clarification of the rules. And Klubnik on the sidelines. Christopher Vizina. His QB two. We saw him towards the end of the game last week at Clemson in their battle against Stanford. There he is, six four freshman out of Birmingham. 
Wow, what a... So Vizina will come in. The question is for how long. It, it looks like they're going to hold Cade Klubnik out for at least a little okay. bit. Probably to evaluate him after getting up a yeah. little, little wobbly. Vizina was a big-time recruit, though. How much do they give him in this game, though? Vizina looks off his intended receiver, then comes back the other way. And incomplete. Nobody home. And it's incomplete, but we have a flag on the field. Azariye Thomas was defending as Klubnik comes back into the ballgame for the Tigers. Pass interference, defense number eight, 15 yard penalty automatic, first down. Folks, college football never fails to shock you. Vandy has defeated Alabama. It's gone final. Put your hand up if you had Vandy today. <laughs> I think a lot of people were on the opposite side of that thing. Klubnik's going to hand it off to Bill Moffa. And nowhere to go for him. You know, winding down. Results like that are, are interesting, obviously because of what it is. But Kalen DeBoer in his first year as the Alabama head coach, it's part of the way to being the Bama head coach. It's not just the Georgia game. It's the games after. Because wow. you're every team's Super Bowl. So can you get your team ready and understanding what it's going to be like on a week in week out basis. It's things that both of these two teams Clemson and Florida State have dealt with at various times and, and often deal with. Second and 12. They set up the screen complete and on the fly more giving you more touchdown Tigers. First touchdown pass of the season for Vizina and more. Pardon me, Klubnik back in the ball game. And it's been a very tumultuous last week for T.J. Moore. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment on the personal side. Hey, lots of news back in the studio. What do you have for us, guys? <laughs> Ooh, I can hear wow. them from here. Wow. What does that do to the college football playoff picture now? I'm wondering immediately, right? Well, fortunately for, for all these teams, you really get a mulligan, especially right. when you have. Yeah. It's a, a land of second like chances now, right? It is, and sometimes third chances, depending on your conference. So, so not a ton there, but I mean, how about that for Clark Lee and that program? Two seconds to go in the quarter. Seminoles down 17 to nothing. Brock Glenn off to a shaky start. We'll see how he responds after throwing that interception a moment ago. And, and if you're Mike Norvell, you're pulling out all the stops to try and get something going. You're 0 for 3 yeah. on third down. The only time you've moved the chains is on a pass interference call. Hope is not a strategy throwing it downfield and hoping for penalties. Yeah. It's not the way to go about it but it's kind of how it's been offensively for them this year. Wonder if there's a time that we see. The backup quarterback Luke Cromenhawk in the ball game. They hand it off to Toa Feely brought down by Khalil Barnes and that's going to do it. The the for the first quarter, quarter seven. Welcome back everyone to Doe Campbell Field Stadium here at Bobby Bowden Field 17 nothing for the visitors and there's a look at what's at stake Clemson with a win trying to keep momentum on their side as Toa Feely runs it for the first down 
for Florida State. They come in at one and four this evening. And a moment ago, Quint was standing by on the Florida State sideline. When it comes to Brock's improvement, what are you emphasizing? Well, I mean, obviously we got to we got to take what they're giving us, and uh, you know we got to get in a rhythm. Um, you know, we got to be able to run the football and, and be able to have balance. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. First and ten. A daunting hole for a first-time starting quarterback, Brock Glenn. Hands it off to Toofili, a guy who they call their steady Eddie, but he's met immediately by T.J. Parker. Parker, one of their better pass rushers up front for Clemson and pretty good against the run, as we just saw. He did a great job. It looked like it was his own read, kind of playing in between then falling in late. But the reason he's able to get there is because in the middle, number 19, DeMonte Capehart blows up the right guard, excuse me, the left guard, create penetration in the backfield. Second and nine. Glenn, clean pocket, wide open underneath. Oh. Thomas on the move. Inside the 30, first and 10. Seminoles like a breath of fresh air. A 35 yard pickup. So it looks like they're going to try and get Makai Danzi down the sideline, but Landon Thomas is right there. It looks like they're going up top. But he leaks out super late, holds that block forever before he gets out. It's a really nice job of holding your water as a freshman, not leaking out too early so that they pick you up. Thomas had a third quarter touchdown catch last week in that loss against SMU. Glenn gets it out quickly. Complete. That's Williams, but there's a flag down. He's down near the first down marker. Personal foul, left in the passer, defense in the free. They've looked crisp offensively in the last two plays, if nothing else, Roddy. They have. And you get the rough in the passer penalty because the high hit on the quarterback mm -hmm. can't hit the quarterback of that shoulder area. TJ Parker clearly does. And, and Florida State's got a little bit of life. Yeah. You get a big play. That's what explosive plays can do for you. This team has sorely lacked them this year. Toefili in the backfield. First and goal, Florida State. Portier split to the top of the screen. Ball on the ground. And they implode all the way back to the 14-yard line. Malik Benson recovering the loose ball. A loss of five on the play. Second time we've seen them have a negative play like that, Roddy. You had all this positivity, and then you, you put the ball on the ground on, on an easy handoff to the receiver, and it looked like Malik Benson just didn't open a pocket for Brock Glenn. Now you put your offense in a really tough situation. Glenn out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Tofili. And nowhere to go on the left side of that offensive line. That offensive line has been a little bit of a story in an inauspicious way, Roddy, for Florida State. They've had eight different starters in a three-game period. Doesn't help your continuity. Does not. And when you have guys like Richie Leonard, who was really experienced coming over from the University of Florida, he's out for the year. Keandre Jones out today. Jeremiah Byers has missed some time this year. What was thought to be a strength of this team on the offensive line has at times been a liability and certainly not been a help to what this offense is trying to do. Third and goal all the way back at the 13. Glenn into the end zone. Touchdown Florida State. What a grab by Williams. Williams the tight end on the right side of your screen 
It's a little skinny post inside of the corner. Avion Terrell, really nice delivery by Brock Glenn. And the tight end's coming up big. The two freshmen, Landon Thomas and Amari Williams, really helping power that drive. Good to see the guys in that room come together and make some plays. Kyle Morlock had a rough week last week in that loss against SMU, but his fellow tight ends lifting him up right there. The extra point good in the Seminoles with life. Brock Glenn with his first career touchdown pass. Much to the delight of his head coach, Mike Norvell, who's been coaching him up on the sidelines in the stadium. And the Seminoles have been taken off the critical list momentarily. They were looking at a 17 to nothing hole. But Rao just trailed 17 to 7. Mark Jones, Roddy Jones in the booth. Quinn Kessing down at the field. Roddy, what does a score like that mean for a team at home that's been struggling for so long? You hope it, it instills some hope. Uh, you, you, you would think that some energy, it's been a team that's felt it, it, that it, it struggled to find its inspirations. Felt a little empty as a team, to be honest. The responses haven't been great. That was a nice response. Now, it took a little bit for it to happen. You need the defense to, to help as well. But you would think that that would right. instill some belief in this crew. They come in one and four overall. Haven't scored over 21 points in a game this year. First and 10 for Clemson coming back the other way now. Klubnik has a whole bunch of real estate in front of him. And he runs out of bounds near midfield. They're going to spot it at the 48 yard line. And that is a dimension that often goes understated for Cade Klubnik. He ran for 23 yards untouched. And it's been the way that they have hurt teams that have played man coverage against him the most during this season. And the defensive line has to maintain integrity in the rush lanes. You can't get up above the quarterback through those defensive ends and create those holes. Lubnick over the middle, caught down at the 28 yard line. What a grab by Antonio Williams, who shows you why and how he's become their leading receiver. It's a guy that played four games last year, and they sorely missed him. He is a playmaker. He's electric with the ball in his mm. hands, he's got great hands. And this is a nice catch climbing the ladder on a throw that was a little off the mark, but that's what great receivers do to you. They make quarterbacks look yeah. better. 24 yard pickup, first and 10. On the end around, this is Stilato. Turns those shoulders north south. And brought down by Brown. Let's go back to the catch by Antonio Williams. That vertical is probably low 30s. I would say so. <laughs> he's and he's and he's turning as he does that. Yeah. I mean, that might be he might be dunking that. To be honest yeah. with you, Brad Brownell. Yeah. He needs somebody to catch an oop. Call might call him. Antonio Williams. Call him. 11-yard gain. Got a little bit of bounce downfield. First and ten. Wesco in motion on the jet sweep. Brought down back at the 25. Great tackle by Patrick Payton. One of their key guys on that defensive front. Patrick Payton's right there. Kind of at a, in a defensive tackle position. Just shoots up the field. He's able to make the play. Usually think that's going to be one of the big guys. Calm down. I, I do this. I got this. I got this. <laughs> Talked about him looking to make an improvement in his point of attack defense in the run game. Loss of six on the play. Second and 16. Klubnik sacked back at the 32. Cam Riley was the first one to get there. Boy, that's huge. It is. Cam Riley, number 18, getting a lot of playing time today because DJ Lundy, not in the game, just shoots past the center. Ryan Linthicum is able to wrangle Cade Klubnik down. And after the big play to Williams and the big run by Cade Klubnik, now this Florida State defense has two negative plays 
How about the step oh, third? Man. Put him to sleep. Night, he, night. He hit the night, night. I don't know if I do that down <laughs> 10, but hey, man, that's up to you, big dog. Uh, it's not bedtime yet. Right. He's still awake. <laughs> but it is third and 23. Klubnik going to use his legs. Following a cater of blockers down to the 21 yard line and that's going to make it a much more manageable field goal attempt potentially for Nolan Hoosier. What do they do here. Do they kick it. Yeah I think you have to. Dabo Sweeney will be disappointed by the two negative plays after having such a good start to this drive but it's points on the board after Florida State had their momentum right. building drive. Hoosier from 38 yards out. Oh, they blocked it. Got a piece coming off the edge. Seminoles with a great response. Edwin Joseph coming off the edge there, Roddy. Their coaching staff assured us that they play hard on every single play and Edwin Joseph bending the corner blocking the field goal and after getting seven on the offensive side the defense and special teams comes up big Florida State little momentum All right, back here in Tallahassee, Brock Glenn at the reins of the offense. Showing great dominion over this offense during that last drive, leading them into the end zone. Pulls, taking a shot. Complete on Clemson's side of midfield. Malik, the magician, Benson. What a grab. But there is a flag down. Hold on. All the way back at the 12. Penalties like that can be soul sucking. They'll have to re rack and take that catch off the board. But what a great catch, nonetheless. It was a tremendous catch, and maybe the fact that you get it helps, but Andre Otto. The left guard gets bowled over, just pulls down the defender. Andre Otto, a guy that's making a start because of the injuries that they've had up front. Keandre Jones just pulls TJ Parker down after he gets run over. Andre Otto had seven snaps this season offensively coming into this game, and the inexperience showing there. Sets up first and 20. Glenn hands it off to Cam Davis. Brought down by, well, not quite brought down. Kept that pile moving. Time now for our drive recap, covered by Geico. And one more look at that scoring drive led by Brock Glenn. The big play was the catch and run by Landon Thomas right here. The 235 pound tight end, and then another tight end, Amari Williams, with the touchdown catch. And there's been a bit of a youth movement on this offense. Thomas and, and Williams, two freshman tight ends. A tight end position has struggled. We've seen Micah Danzi. We've seen Luane McCoy all playing in this game. So Florida State getting the talent on the field. Glenn hands it off to Cam Davis again. Wade Woodaz making the tackle on the play for that Tiger defense. Woodaz number 17. The guy that really speaks up when things need to be said. On that Clemson defense. He and Bear Carter, a couple of prominent voices for Clemson. Third down and 10 coming up. Glenn, given time. And now on a scramble wisely gets rid of it goes past the line of scrimmage out of the pocket a man in the area no grounding checks the boxes for that but it sets up a fourth and ten. Just kind of shows you the margin for error that this Florida State team has and it's very small. 
You get a big play on first down that's negated by a hold because of inexperience on the offensive line. Put your young quarterback behind the sticks and push you in a third and long where you're just throwing it away. It's you're going to have to make the plays when they're presented and you can't have those crucial mistakes. Fourth and ten coming up. Mastromano ready to punt and we're going to have a procedure call. Ball strike. Offense number one. Five drive penalty. Fourth down. Five oh six to go in the first half. It's a pretty big response by Clemson's defense because Florida State on the scoring drive, the blocked field goal, opportunity to get off the field. Mastromano, the Australian punter, a high spiral line drive all the way back to the 27 yard line. It'll be first and 10 from Klubnik in the offense from there. News from Adam Schefter as well. Sunday NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN in the app. Week 5 Monday Night Football matchup. A great one for you. Featuring the Chiefs and Saints. 8 Eastern ESPN, the Portes with Peyton and Eli once again on ESPN2. You talk about a fantastic football player. Back in the day here at Florida State, Warwick Dunn went on to have a stellar career in the NFL. He had an age today. Looks the just exact a, same. Just, just a little salt on the hair. That's a it. A little bit. That's it, though. Mafa picks up the first down. When you talk about a guy that through his foundation has had an incredible impact on changing lives. Warwick Dunn, his foundation, building homes. You may have heard the story, folks, about how his foundation built homes, including the one for Deshaun Watson back in the day. And it's, it's awesome that we got to tell that story a lot when Deshaun Watson was at Clemson. Phenomenal running back, better person. He's, other than Barry Sanders and Marshall Falk, like, yeah. Warwick Dunn's the guy for me as a running back. I love the way he played. But he ain't coming through the door tonight. Oh, he's not. not with shoulder pads anyway. <laughs> Williams with the catch. Florida State and the National Football Foundation jointly honor Warwick Dunn, a member of the 2024 College Football Hall of Fame class. Congrats. Pass complete to Bryant Wesco. Pick up a four on the play. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Feels like Florida State has their footing back underneath them a little bit, Roddy. They were staggering early at 17-0, and then they got a little bit going. There was some room for belief. But Clemson, I mean, they want to make sure that there is no hope. Yeah. Got a glimpse of Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator on the sidelines. Klubnik pulls it out downfield into a tight window, caught incredibly at the 25-yard line. What a grab by Josh Sapp. Ooh, he threaded that thing for 24 yards. I mean, if there was a window, it was it was barely cracked. That goes, it looked like it went between the arms. Mm. Florida State defender Ashlyn Baker. I mean, that's putting it in a keyhole. Mm. That is pinpoint accuracy. How about the catch and the concentration by Josh Sapp? From the 25. Klubnik on the play fake. Going to try and take off and tackled. There's a flag down. Klubnik down at the 26. This might be a horse collar. From our vantage point, three stories up. Three. <laughs> After further conversation, there's no foul for a face mask on the play. It'll be second down. No face mask. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, your evaluation of that play. Well, originally I thought it was a face mask, but in the second view, it looked like he probably got him the side of the shoulder pad. Yeah, his hand kind of slid on the horse collar area, right? Yeah. So Matt, why? Well, but to be to be a high horse collar, you got to you got to snap him sideways or backwards quickly. So I, I don't think that met the standard for a horse collar. Klubnik has connected on his last seven passes, but they keep it on the ground. Phil Maffa brought down by Omar Graham Jr. That's a two-minute timeout. Two-minute timeout. 
with the score 17 to 7. State just trying to get their mojo back, get their second win of the season. Under the stewardship of a new quarterback. Brock Glenn, meanwhile, Clemson one of four on third down tonight. Klubnik to pass. Batted away, incomplete. Cypress knocked it down. It was intended for Williams. And another minor win for the Seminoles defensively here, Roddy. It is, and these four state corners are really talented. Ventro Cypress arriving maybe a slight bit early, but not enough for a call, obviously. And Florida State now in a situation they've already blocked one right. field goal. Expect that right side of the Florida State defense to test the left side of this field goal team again. Hoosier from 38. And gets this one inside the right upright as we head back to the studio on this big day of college football. On the service academy from both Army and Navy, five and zero. Oh, we are, and they're wow. they're legit. We are looking at a scenario where you could have Army and Navy meet in the American Conference Championship game a week before the Army Navy wow. game. One of them get into the playoff? Absolutely. If they're the highest ranked Group of Five team, then you absolutely would. Army Navy would be played after the announcement. Army Navy is not going to be taken into account when it comes right. to the college ball playoffs. So you could wow. have a team lose Army Navy and still make the college ball playoff. Absolutely. Whew. Different times. Got to love it. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. That last scoring drive, nine plays, 51 yards, concluding with the field goal. And there's a look at the 20. No complaints here. <laughs> Glenn out of the shotgun, complete over the middle to Portier. And he's going to end up about a yard and a half short of that first down. Second down coming up. Florida State with two of its three timeouts remaining. Trying to move quickly here. Glenn had it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. DeMonte Capehart got a hand up and knocked that down, the 6'5", 315-pound grad student. DeMonte Capehart does not get enough recognition for what he does on the interior of this Clemson defense. It's not his job to make all the tackles and get all the publicity, but he is a disruptive force that eats up blocks inside. Great job of taking his hand straight to the quarterback's hand and batting that ball down. And we asked Wes Goodwin about him. He said, DeMonte is a people mover. <laughs> Third and two. To get it out quickly on the receiver screen, incomplete. Well read defensively. Barrett Carter, the linebacker, was out there and had a beat on that. It was intended for Toa Feely instead. It's fourth and two, and Barrett Carter is ubiquitous. He is all over the football field. One of their leaders defensively. You had a great visit with him last week when we were at Clemson wisely quickly blows up that play and that's a pretty demoralizing non conversion for Florida State now Clemson's going to get the ball with a lot of time and two yeah. timeouts get points before halftime Pastromano got it off And it comes down at about the 14 after the 53 yard punt and back to Barrett Carter there he is uh, on the sideline zero. We we're talking a little NIL with him and uh, his father is a financial planner Friday. So I tried to work him for some some tips on the market right now. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, Did you get any. I'm, I'm still waiting for the okay. email to refresh and see what happens. <laughs> There's some nice cars in that Clemson parking lot. I'm trying to get one. There, there are nice cars <laughs> that are in the parking lots of every major football program across the country. Hey, man. I'm trying to go from a hoopty to a whip, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, seen, I've seen how you roll. You're in, not in the car wise, but I have a feeling we don't have no hoopty. 
One twelve to go in the first half. Klubnik hands it off to Maffa. And the big bruising burly back makes it out to the 30 and beyond for Clemson. Got 16 on that carry with 104 to go. Hey, tomorrow afternoon we'll have both game fours in the best of five WNBA playoff semis. Liberty and Aces squaring off at 3 Eastern on ABC, then on ESPN, Minnesota against Connecticut. New York and Minnesota up two games to one, looking to move on into the finals. WNBA countdown tips off coverage at 2.30 Eastern on ABC. And I'm still high on Asia Wilson, the reigning MVP, the best female basketball player on the planet, bar none, and her team's ability to come back against a, a great New York team. Great New York team that stormed out to a 2-0 lead. Ace is going to have to win three straight if they're going to advance, but you don't put anything past Asia Wilson. No. Maffa with nowhere to go. A blockade up front led by Patrick Payton. Florida State takes its second time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Seminoles with one timeout remaining. That was a pretty conservative call there from, from Clemson. I understand it on the first play of the drive when you're able to crease them and get a big gain, kind of get the drive started. But it it's felt like once you're committed to going and trying to score points, you'd be a little more aggressive. Yeah. They're only one for five on third downs in this game, and now they've got a third and 13. Yeah. I like Florida State taking the timeout. Yeah. I mean, be aggressive. Try and get the ball, but you get the ball first in the second half, too. Hey, Clemson players have been through a lot recently, right, Q? Hey, re receiver T.J. Moore, who scored a touchdown early in this game, is a native of Tarpon Springs, Florida. His family's house was destroyed, and including the family car uh, affected by Hurricane Helene. Tarpon Springs is uh, Central Gulf Coast, north of Clearwater. His parents were at the Stanford game last weekend, and Clemson players and staff contributed to a GoFundMe page, which is helping get the family back on their feet. You think about the football family, his mom, Alexandra Moore, expressing gratitude on X or Twitter. It's taken an emotional toll. Great to see TJ get in the end zone for his family today. Yeah, fantastic moment. Third and 13. Pass complete. Out to the edge. That's Wesco. You know, don't miss this, folks. Don't miss this. Q said that players and coaches helped contribute to the rebuild for the Moore family. Players, a.k.a. using their NIL money to contribute to the family of T.J. Moore. So you can say what you want about NIL cash, but it's doing some great things. And a lot, bunch of linen on the field down there, Ronnie. Going to get a, an offsides by the defense and then a pass interference. Patrick Payton has jumped offsides a couple of times mm. in this game. He's being pulled off the field. And there are two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Offside, defense number 11. That penalty's declined. Pass interference, defense number three. That penalty will be accepted, 15 yards, automatic first down. Mm. And now, here's the first one. Patrick Payton on the end of the line of scrimmage. He wasn't the only one. Marvin Jones flinched as well. But wow. Patrick Payton was clearly across. And then here's the second one. You get Kevin Knowles on the back of Troy Stilato knocking him down. But Mike Norvell, remember, used that timeout after Clemson ran the ball, being aggressive. Now Clemson's in a great opportunity to get points. Klubnik on the quarterback draw, predetermined run. For the quarterback, pushed out of bounds at about the 34-35 yard line. What do you make of the job Klubnik's done so far in the first half? But he's done a nice job. Uh, the, he's made some throws. He's really used his legs effectively. They haven't been great on third down. Clemson hasn't, but 13 of 19, 178 yards, and then he's their leading rusher with 55 mm -hmm. yards on the ground. I thought he's done a really nice job. Second and four. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. They're going to keep it between the tackles. Phil Maffa. With great acceleration. Got those pads low and picked up 10 yards. Look at the numbers on Klubnik. They'll spike it with 26 seconds to go. 
and two timeouts remaining. Still got a shot here for an opportunity to get into the end zone. Got at least two, three plays left. Absolutely. You got two timeouts. You can use the middle of the field as much as you want. And you've got, you've got time for more than that if you manage it right. Getting out of bounds, using the timeouts only when you have to. Williams split to the top of your screen. Klubnik comes the other way underneath, complete. Wesco tackled at about the 15 yard line. Brought down by Thomas, and Clemson calls timeout after the 10 yard pickup. Clemson takes his second timeout of half. The 30 second timeout. Bryant Wesco has been one of the prominent targets throughout the early part of the season here. He is out of high school in the Texas area. It was a little shaken up, but, but what Dabo Sweeney believes in is that they recruit at a high enough level and they develop at a high enough level to be competitive without needing to bring in players from the transfer portal. And we can be critical of his evaluation of players maybe saying that he doesn't think the players in the portal are better than the ones he has in house. But I think this Clemson team has refound their high school recruiting and development mojo with guys like Brian Wesco. First and 10 from the 15. Mafa motions out of the backfield. Klubnik into the end zone. Pulls it incomplete. Threw it high for Antonio Williams. Stops the clock with 15 seconds to go. Second down and 10. You know, he was open. You, you may look at that and say it's a it's a bad throw, but Ventrell Cypress, watch 23 undercut this play. He's got to throw it in between the corner and the safety. If he throws that on a line, Cypress is going to have a chance. That's a my guy or nobody ball. It's actually pretty decent placement by Cade Klubnik. Maybe a little too high, but throwing it up high was the way to go. Cole Turner split to the bottom of your screen. Klubnik blitzed off the corner, eludes the rush. And wisely, using great discernment, throws it out of bounds. But man, he saved the day. Jones came in like a missile. And good pressure by Edwin Joseph as well. Completely unblocked off the edge is Edwin Joseph. Kate Klubnik using his athleticism and quickness, getting out of what could have been disaster for Clemson, pushing him back. Man, if you're. Joseph, you, you got to finish your breakfast, you gotta man. Fit. You got to get that. You want to you want to come under a little bit more balance as you get to the quarterback and stay on that upfield shoulder, so he can't scramble by getting deeper and around you. Third and ten. Klubnik, quick three-step drop and fires a completion to Brennan Stool and a timeout called by the Tigers with three seconds to go. Clemson takes its final timeout of the half. Hey, coming up tonight at 10 and 30 Eastern time right here on ESPN. Number eight, the Miami Hurricanes on the climb right now under head coach Mario Cristobal. The dudes from Coral Gables, Florida taking on three and one Cal. Cam Ward putting together a Heisman worthy campaign. Last time he played Cal was last year. When he was at Washington State, turned the ball over four times mm. in that game. Cal is going to hope to do that again. Miami playing a 10:30 Eastern Time kick Ooh. in a conference game. <laughs> hey, people from South Florida stay up late. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth and three. <laughs> Got a seminal timeout down on the field. But yeah, the new ACC is such that, you know, we saw it with Stanford, right? They go to Syracuse, fly back to the, the Bay Area. Last week, fly to Clemson, fly back to the Bay Area. Miami flying out to the Bay Area to take on Cal, and uh, that's just part of the deal now. It's the new reality, and honestly, football teams have it easy compared to all the other sports that have to make those trips and don't get to fly on charter planes. Yeah. But... Conference realignment that's worth brought. Yes. I'm sure that these athletic performance staffs are doing their sleep training and modifications. Nolan Hoosier. Hoosier with the 25 yard field goal, which is good. 
And that's going to be the end of the first half of play. Clemson leading 23 to 7 on more than one occasion. And they lead 23 to 7. But the good news is that the Seminoles will have the football to start the third quarter, first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by IHG Hotels and Resorts. Folks, this is the ACC on ESPN. Mark Jones, Roddy Jones, chopping it up here in the booth. Quinn Kessnick down on the field. He'll join us in just a moment. What does Florida State have to do here in the third quarter? They've got a great opportunity with possession to start. Yeah, well, they've got to get something going on this drive, and then they've got to get a stop. You're, you're just trying to stack wins. It's mm -hmm. one first down, then another first down, one score, then another score, one stop, then another stop. But it starts here with Brock Lynn. Making his first career start. They run it over the right side of that offensive line. Nothing doing. It'll be a loss of two. Let's go down to Quinn. If you're Dabo Sweeney, you're encouraged because your team has met new challenges. Well, what does that mean? September was a month to remember for the Clemson Tigers. They were undefeated, 3-0. All those games were at home, so they're passing thus far. They're passing their first road test. He also was encouraged with that two-minute drill before halftime. You think about their games this year, they really haven't had to execute the two-minute drill, meeting new challenges. And keeping their momentum. Seminoles keep it on the ground on second and 12. That was Cam Davis. We've seen Davis. We've seen Toa Fieldy get the bulk of the carries and the touches. Third down coming up for Florida State. We weren't sure that Cam Davis was going to play. He was banged up for a lot of the week. But looked good on that run and has looked good when he's been in the game. Looked healthy. Big third down here for Brock Lynn. They go empty. Glenn gets rid of it quickly, completed the 40, and a first down catch and run by Williams. He threw that with authority, Roddy. He did. He was on time. I like Mike Norvell going empty, clearing the picture up for Brock Glenn, giving him an easy read. Knows exactly where to go with the football. And Hakeem Williams creating separation against Jaden Lucas wide open. Here midfield, Tofili will cut it back. Get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Wade Wood is making the stop on the play. Two time academic all ACC. One of the team captains. Going back to the question that you asked about Florida State. We got the one first down. OK. Right. Now you need to stack another first down. Don't worry about the scoreboard. You just stack little wins one play after another. Try and climb, get some momentum back into this game. Norvell told us in our meeting with him that this team was excited for the opportunity against Clemson tonight. Handoff goes down to the 46 yard line. Toafili again picks up about three. RJ Mickens making the stop for the Tigers. We had a great visit with him. He told us about how he felt last year in losing to Florida State, he didn't bring his best game. He was determined to change the story here tonight. Of course, his dad, an NFL pro back in the day. On the play action, they set up the screen to the tight end, Brian Courtney. And Courtney is going to be stopped up short of the first down on a three yard gain. Fourth down, intriguing call coming up here, Roddy. There's no doubt that you go for it. The question is just about the play call. Do you put it on Brock Glenn? And if you do, what do you go with? They bring in Landon Thomas back into the game, the productive young tight end to the top in the slot. 7-0, 7 13 on fourth downs this season. They're going to throw it. Complete and they move the chains a huge confidence builder for Mike Norvell's offense Roddy and there is not much of a window to throw this ball into it all Barrett Carter is coming from inside out screaming towards this football but Brocklin once again with the decisive throw right on the one that one is pretty thin and he yeah. stuck it right in the middle of it nice job by the young quarterback as you put it stacking another win yeah first and ten at the thirty five. Samuel Singleton Jr. in the backfield. 
Gets it out quickly again on the edge, one on one, but a great open field tackle on Landon Thomas. That Clemson defense covering a lot of ground in the secondary. Ashton Hampton made the tackle to limit the game to just two yards. He is an exciting young corner. Six foot two, 200 pounds at the cornerback position. Hasn't played a ton this year because their two starters, Lucas and Terrell, have been excellent. But up in this game, getting the first drive, making a big tackle, physical from the big corner. His dad, Alonzo, is the head coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. High snap! And Glenn pounces on it back on the Seminole side of midfield, a self-inflicted wound. Wow. Yao Ming couldn't have caught that snap. I mean. I mean, and this is from a center that's a fifth-year senior, and Maurice Smith. Seen two of those tonight, right? We have. We've. The other one, he was at least able to wrangle and bring down. Wow, you lose 17 yards on that, Roddy. It's just a backbreaker. Third and 25. Tigers drop a bunch of cover people. And keep everything in front of them. Landon Thomas makes the catch. Up to the 42-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. Fourth down coming up. They've got to get down to the... 25 question here is are you close enough for a long field goal I mean from here looking at one that's almost 60 yards yeah Ryan Fitzgerald does have 60 yard range we asked him we bring asked coach Master about Mono, it but he's yeah, yeah, Master Mono instead of course this would be a good part of the field to maybe fake one it would be Clemson knows that they've got their defense on the field Mastronamo End over end punt. They'll have a chance to down this. Antonio Williams makes the catch inside the 10. A three? It is October. Mafa. Wow. He planted somebody like a garden down there. Kirkland is wondering what hit him. Left pieces him on the field. In KJ wow. Kirkland's mouthpiece came out. This is not a sport for the faint of heart. No. Mafa couldn't turn the corner that time. But trying to tackle a 230-pound back. Let's listen to it one more time. Tell you what, you take a hit like that, that'll rattle your feelings. So I played offense. Call your dentist. student section of the year download the Taco Bell app to learn more a lot of great costumes out there partner how much how much would it take for you to get glittered up from head to toe like those guys were in the first I got shot? a price I'm not even gonna lie to you <laughs> but there's got to be a lot of commas in there <laughs> a lot of commas Roddy <laughs> I got a price too it might just be one comma but <laughs> second and eight Klubnik surveys finds his man at the 27 yard line that's Jay Haynes out of the backfield still on his feet across the 29 for the first down and the pack were giving him great assistance to move the chains an eight yard gain on this incredibly riveting night of college football where number one Alabama goes down in Nashville against Vanderbilt a historic win for the Commodores. Run up the middle. This is Jay Haynes. What does that say about maybe the SEC, if, if anything at all? 
and the implication of the college football playoff? I think it's hard to draw grand conclusions about the league based on, on that game. I think Alabama coming off a big win just didn't respond very well. Mm. Vanderbilt held the ball for the vast majority of that game. Uh, on the other side for the CFP, I mean, it certainly gives the SEC less margin for error, right. I think, when it comes to the college football playoff, particularly if Notre Dame's involved, one of those at-large spots. Klubnik completes it. Out to the 39 yard line, Brennan Stuhl moves the pile again to within a yard of that first down at about the 39 and a half, a seven yard pickup. A third down and short. Moffa to the left of quarterback Klubnik. He gets the call, gets the first down, and then some. Omar Graham stopping him after a five yard pickup. Mafa with good chemistry with his quarterback. Here's what he had to say had just had a lot of growth him growing as a leader growing as a quarterback better reads confident and that's why we are where we are right now. And you can see it in the run game. And in the past game, we've seen it today, 55 yards rushing from Cade Klubnik. Most of those on quarterback scrambles. 17 of 25 throwing the ball. Incredibly efficient. They keep it on the ground. Mafa dancing between the tackles. Picks up four yards. Under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Clemson Tigers coming in three and one. Off a win last week against Stanford, 40 to 14. Before that, a win against North Carolina State convincingly. App State before that. And Clemson needed to run the ball better. And Q, didn't Dabo Sweeney say something to you about just that coming out of half? Yeah, we were talking about the run game, and, and so much of it has been the quarterback, Kay Klubnik, and his scrambles. So they wanted to get Mafa going. Klubnik delivering downfield on the post, incomplete. He overshoots his receiver. Antonio Williams being defended by Cypress the second. It'll be third down and six. They've talked about him committing to those deep shots and being aggressive, right? And he's, he's been high on a few balls today. That one a little bit overthrown. Antonio Williams didn't have a chance to adjust on it or didn't see it very well to be able to. But I, I think Cade Klubnik, the deep ball is something that there's still a little bit of room for improvement. On third and six. And the Tigers are going to call timeout. Clemson takes its first time out of the half. Dabo says this team has vets on it that still have scars, but also enthusiasm. Welcome back. Hey, help people affected by Hurricane Helene. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover. And watch special editions of ABC's Good Morning America tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday as they spotlight communities across the southeast impacted by Hurricane Helene as well as their recovery efforts. On third and six, Klubnik incomplete at midfield intended for Brennan Stuhl. Broken up nicely by Graham Jr. And they'll get off the field. That's a really nice job by Omar Graham Jr. Who's again getting a lot more playing time today because DJ Lundy's been banged up. Not playing in this one. But the, the two guys who have filled in Cam Riley and Omar Graham have shown up. They're big long linebackers. Nice job covering a really good receiving tight end there. McCoy back for this punt. Swanson from his own 38 yard line a high end over end punt that Karam's at the 11 and the Tigers going to down it inside the five they'll spot it at the four yard line so the Seminoles and first time starter here at home Brock Glenn 96 yards away after that 48 yard punt. First down and 10 if you're just joining us. DJ Uyalangalea out with a hand injury was injured last week in their loss against SMU. 
And Brock Glenn with his first ever opportunity here at Florida State to have a whole week of practice knowing he was going to be QB1. Out of his end zone. They keep it on the ground with Toafili. And nowhere to go for him. A one yard gain on the play. Capehart and Parker and Denhoff in on the stop for the Tigers. Florida State came into this game averaging 2.8 yards per rush. In this game, it's negative 0.1 yards per rush right now. I mean, it has been nothing on yeah. the ground the entire season for Florida State. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get worse, out of his end zone, takes a shot, overshoots his receiver, incomplete at midfield. He tried to find Hakeem Williams, but nobody was even close. Sets up a third down and nine to go. Brock Glenn actually has been familiar. Norvell was familiar with him going back to Norvell's time in Memphis when he was the coach there. Glenn went to Lausanne School, one of the top schools athletically in the area. His parents were vacationing down here in Tallahassee. He came along and that helped seal the deal in terms of his recruitment. On third and nine. Incomplete at the 15 yard line for Ja'Kai Douglas. Looked like it hit him in the hands and he couldn't squeeze it. Ended up being a tough ball to catch for Ja'Kai Douglas. But it was really because there was a little bit of pressure in Brock Glenn's face, and he tried to reset and throw it almost sidearm. Mm. Uh, wasn't the most accurate throw we've seen from Brock Glenn tonight, and Clemson is able to get off the field on third down. And they should end up with pretty good field position after this punt by Mastromano. Out of the shadows of his own goalposts, a line drive spiral. Returnable at the 40 yard line. Here's Antonio Williams. And Williams brought down right around the 44 45 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Klubnik after that 54 yard punt. Hey, next Saturday, 8 Eastern, our ACC Network primetime game as NC State hosting Syracuse at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. In fact, the ACC Network huddle crew will be there all day long starting. At 11 a.m. Big win for Syracuse on the road at UNLV wow. in an overtime game last night. It was a lot of fun. And NC State, scary scene with Grayson McCall going down. Saw that. Tough yeah. loss for them today against uh, against Wake Forest. UNLV's first loss of the season, right? It was, yeah. You wonder what it does for their potential path to being the highest rated group of five team, which would be an automatic bid in the college football playoff. Klubnik incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Good pressure up front by Byron Turner Jr. The 6 4 redshirt junior out of Louisiana. That's up a second down and 10 for the Tigers. No scoring so far here in the third quarter. There's Mafra. They have been handing the ball off to him frequently here in the third quarter. They almost seem very purposeful about doing that. It's sort of a big focus over the course of the week. Dabo Sweeney told us that, that they needed to get Phil Mafra going. They needed to run the ball better. And, and when you're a coach, quarterback scrambles are great, but they're going to have to line up and run the ball. Yeah. That offensive line. Of season. Sorry, Roddy. That offensive line has been good. They didn't give up their first sack of the season until last week against Stanford. Yeah. Third and seven. Brand stool in motion now sets. On a quick slant, caught for the first down, and then some T.J. Moore, who had a touchdown reception a little bit earlier, picks up 16 and moves the chains. Young it's, a, it's a nice job by T.J. Moore. I mean, this is a 
Just a contested can't catch slant. He turns his head. The ball's already in the air. He's able to reel it in. T.J. Moore is a big-time prospect. I mean, 6'3", 200 pounds. Talked about what he's been through yeah. since Hurricane Helene. Took his family's house just north of Clearwater. Him to get in the end zone today is tremendous. And also, that catch was big time. So far through a GoFundMe effort, they've raised in the vicinity of $50,000 for recovery efforts for T.J. Moore and his family to get them relocated and rehoused. Meanwhile, we have Walker Parks shaking up on the field, the starting right guard for the Tigers. Talked about how good that offensive line has been all year. See if they can finish the job here on the ground, getting Mafa going, like you said. Having Walker Parks back was a big reason that this offensive line has been better. Missed most of last season after starting 13 games in 2021 and 22. One of their most experienced guys. It's good to see him get up and walk off. Looks yeah. like he's, he was just a bit shaken up. Under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Mark Jones, Roddy Jones, Quint Kessinick here on the J.O.B. as Clemson looks for its fourth win of the season. More split to the bottom of your screen. Incomplete intended into the flat to Josh Ab Sapp, pardon me. And couldn't squeeze it. Hit him in the hands, too. Did. He had a nice catch earlier in the game. Yeah. Had a missed opportunity. Second down and 10. Marching Chiefs still into the game a little bit. Yes. Mafa motions out of the backfield. Klubnik. Made a nice move, but he's brought down at about the 24 yard line by Joshua Farmer. One of the better stories on that defense for defensive coordinator Adam Fuller. Causes a lot of disruption up there. When teams say Florida State has talent, the first guy that they mention often is Joshua Farmer, number five. This guy's going to play in the NFL probably for a long time as disruptive as he can be at defensive tackle. Third and eight. On the out. Caught at the 11 yard line. Cole Turner contorted his body and made the grab to pick up 13 and a first down. This did not look like an easy routine catch, Roddy. It's a great display of body control by Cole Turner. Going up to the inside, catching the ball, getting down in bounds on the third down, yeah. no less. So high pressure, as high pressure as it gets <laughs> in this situation. Turner, one of the faster players, along with Wesco on that Tiger offense. They motion him this time into the end zone, incomplete. Tended for the tight end. Olsen, Pat Henry. So it'll be second down and 10 for Clemson. Clemson thought that when they sent that motion across the formation that the, the corner, Fintrell Cypress, was going to follow the motion all the way across. Well, he passed the receiver off to the other defenders and blitzed off the edge, which forced Kate Klemick to have to let it go. Williams split to the bottom of the screen. They keep it on the ground. Mafa grinds out about three yards. Patrick Payton making the tackle. So third down coming up. Mafa was a guy that they said they wanted to be purposeful about making sure he had success today. He's been a real pro in his approach. Third and seven now. 
expect some pressure out of Florida State. Try and make Kid Klebnik get the ball out of his hands quickly. Create some one on ones for these pass rushers. Klebnik broken up nicely. No flag on the play. Cypress got a hand in there and punched it away from Turner. Boy, he had a great beat on that, Roddy. And he didn't commit pass interference prior to the ball being there. Sort of stayed on the back of Cole Turner until the ball arrived and stuck his hand around, knocked it down. Very composed way of playing cornerback from Fentrell Cypress. Here comes Nolan Hoosier again. This one coming from 25 yards out. Hoosier got it blocked again. For the second time tonight, the Seminoles snuff a field goal attempt. A huge defensive surge. Look at this side of the field goal block. A surge right through. Patrick Payton's in there. We've got Shaheen Brown in there. It's the same side that had the block before as well, before it came off the edge. But Patrick Payton able to get that big, long arm up in the air and block the field goal. They said they scouted something on tape that they were going to be able to exploit in special teams, and they've done it twice. On the ground, that's Cam Davis. I don't know if you, if you want to take any positives from this, but Clemson's dominated this game. And but Florida State has shown up yeah. in some key areas that's kept it within reason. Clemson 391 yards of offense. It feels like they should be up a lot more. Yeah, if you look at the raw numbers, Roddy, and then looked at the scoreboard, it would be difficult to reconcile the two. Yeah, it it doesn't add up. But that's the end of the first. Oh, you know, they, we stopped them, but they pinned us inside the 10. We flipped the field all the way to the four, got the stop, and then we got a great opportunity to get points right here. And where our left side is just, we're just, they're crushing us. Twice. We're, we're down, yeah, Twice. down, we're down a, a guy to an injury. It's really disappointing in that. That's two scores. That's, that's, that's another touchdown. So that's the biggest disappointment for me. We're playing good, we're playing tough, but we got to finish. And that, that's not, that's not how you finish. Thank you. Finish. Huey's not going to like that 13 yard pickup by Florida State on that last pass and catch. First and 10 from the 40 for the Seminoles. Incomplete. And they almost had themselves an interception. Ashton Hampton, the talented tall corner at 6 2. Ronnie, you were talking about him a moment ago. He almost had a pick six here. It's a great break on the football by Ashton Hampton. And I mean, if if he's able to, if he knows that's going to be off target and get both hands to it, he certainly could have picked it and would have taken it to the house. He's already got a pick six earlier this year against NC State. Could have had another one. Second and ten. They run the counter down to the 42-yard line. Toa Feely picked up two yards. Sets up third. And long and another uh, Aaron snap here. Rockland having to go up and get it a little bit. We've seen one that he's kind of had to jump for. One went yeah. way over his head for a 17 yard loss. That one, you're really right at his head. You're a baseball guy. He needs that catcher's mitt for the knuckleball. Maybe the first base mitt. <laughs> Try and wrangle that thing a little bit bigger. Third and eight. They go empty. Pass is complete, but short of the first down. Malik Benson made the catch, but Terrell was right there to stop him short of midfield even. And it's fourth down, and the Seminoles are going to go for it after the six-yard pickup. Converted their first fourth down that they went for earlier in this game. Glenn. Over the middle in traffic and got it in. Another dart, a laser complete to Ja'Kai Douglas for the first down. How about Ja'Kai Douglas just posting up, going and past the first down sticks, 
And just like a basketball post up, keeping the defender on his back, raising his hand, saying, dish me the ball, mm. Brooklyn puts it on him. First down and 10. Glenn wide open underneath and it's dropped by Portier. Let's go back to the studio, but there's a flag down on the play. Hold on. Holding offense number 65. 10 yard penalty, first down. Let's go back to the studio now. Right back here, they've moved it back. Boy, the Seminoles, seven penalties for a total of 75 yards on a night when the offense has been hard to come by. Taking a shot downfield, got a man! Incomplete at the seven for Williamson. He appeared to lose his footing, but wow, that was there. The last two plays describe Florida State season perfectly. You drop a play before where you've got a wide open player who drops the ball, but you have a holding penalty anyway. This one you draw up and you, you get open downfield and and Darion Williamson can't keep his feet, drops the touchdown. You got to make that catch. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities. No. You got to make them. So Feely in the backfield. Glenn delivers a strike complete for the first down. Landon Thomas, no, it's short of the first down. Pardon me, I take that back. Thomas did not make it. It'll be third down coming up. And I think at this point, Mike Norvell is just looking for people who will catch the football reliably. Drops have been a big issue for this team. And and it's, it's both in, in games and from what we saw in practice as well. Third and nine. Another Aaron snap. And incomplete as a result. Tough to make up for a bad snap like that and make something out of a play. Fourth down coming up. You, you just, this, is, this has been an issue all day. That one Brock Glenn was able to, to hold on to. This one was a 17 yard loss is what it resulted in. That one was high, and then we got our first one that was low and outside on the last play. Mm. Between that and the penalties and the drops, I mean, this is its kind of who Florida State's been. The good news is they've converted both times on fourth down tonight. Some sunshine. Hey, man, half full. Not half empty. Not yet. Glenn. Nice pump fake. Tucks it under. Gonna try and make it on his own. Oh, he did the self checkout. Did it himself and got the first down. Brock Glenn with a last gasp lunge. He was a little bit shaken up, but how about the fight from Brock Glenn? It's been really good on the fourth downs that they've had. This is an element of the offense that they did not have with DJ Uyunglele, and we haven't seen it a lot from Brock Glenn, but I think it's something that Florida State should utilize more, yeah. his ability to make plays on the ground. Look comfortable doing it. Yes, he did. On first and 10, steps up, tried to throw it, and it was tipped. It was wobbly coming out of his hand. Trey Williams putting pressure on him it'll be second down and ten that was a nice job of maneuvering in the pocket but Jaheim Lawson creates the first pressure and then up the middle Trey Williams gets a hand out there on Brock Glenn I mean, he, had, he had nowhere to go he goes left and there's pressure he goes right in those pressure he climbs in the pocket and there's pressure <laughs> they were on him like white on rice yes, they were <laughs> yes they were <laughs> second and ten Good to stay alive on that last play. It looks like the Seminoles are going to burn one of their timeouts here. 
Timeout, Florida State. They've got two remaining with just under 11 minutes to go, trying to get back in the win column. Game one of the WNBA Finals Thursday night on ESPN. Brock Glenn on the move. Gets down inside the 30, back up quickly. Barrett Carter making the stop on the play. A pickup of six for Brock Glenn. I think you have to like what you've seen on the whole from Brock Glenn. And, and it's, it's not all about the production, but it's about the attitude and the energy that he's brought with his legs and just his, his moxie. There's something to him. Third and four. Four down territory. Throws a dart. Complete to Hakeem Williams still on his feet and down within the shadow of the 10 yard line. First and 10 Florida State. I Brock think Glenn in a nice rhythm. He is. I think that ball squirted out. And lucky for them, Amari Williams was able to jump on it. Going to place it at the 12. Seminoles moving with brevity right now. Glenn on the RPO fires incomplete. Has intended from Malik Benson. Benson. Stops the clock with 940 10. to go, second and 10. Those are the types of, of throws that kind of make you pull your hair out as a coach. You should get five yards, but that's with experience, you know, and reps. You hope that Brock Glenn's able to correct some of that. You know, Mike Norvell has consistently said until the injury to DJU, he gave us the best chance to win. I think Brock Glenn has really shown today that that the dimensions that he brings to the struggling offense can help you at least yeah. move the ball some. Morlock in motion now sets. Pulls it out in the end zone. Touchdown Seminoles, Ja'Kai Douglas. Ja'Kai Douglas just beats his man inside. And a nice throw on the money by Brock Glenn. And now Florida State in a situation where they're going to go for two to try and cut this deficit to eight if they can. Makes it a potential one score game. A little over nine and a half to go. Cam Davis in the backfield. And we're going to have a timeout called by Clemson. For the try, Clemson takes his second timeout of the half. Well, keep in mind, folks, that last year, Clemson was in control for about 47 and a half minutes <laughs> before the Seminoles rallied to win the game in overtime, something that wasn't lost on Clemson and their coaching staff this week. No, it was not. And, and they wanted to come out and play well kind of in a revenge kind of way because yeah. they felt like they should have won that game last year. But Dabo Sweeney's got to be frustrated. His team has dominated this game. And yet, with a conversion here, <laughs> this is really interesting. And surprisingly interesting if Florida State's only down by eight. Clemson, that one timeout that they have left, having to take those two timeouts, might come right. back to haunt them. Number 15 Clemson against unranked Florida State coming in at one and four on a day that saw Vanderbilt upset number one Alabama. And back to the field on the two point attempt. Glenn fires incomplete. And it remains a 10 point margin intended for Malik Benson. But the Seminoles showing life with 9.36 to play. Said it was a crazy week. The Vanderbilt Commodore fans, club like the latest. Trying to put this game on ice, but a feisty Florida State squad right now. Refusing to give up. And we saw evidence of that all week. Watching them in practice. And listening to head coach Mike Norvell. That's a, an adjective that hasn't often been used to describe Florida State feisty. But they have been in this game. They haven't given up. They've been really good on fourth downs. 
when they've gone for it. Now it's up to this defense to get a stop. And right. if you're Clemson, you're trying to reassert the dominance that you've established in this game because on the stat sheet, they should be running away with this yeah. thing. And here we are in a 10-point game. Between the tackles, they gash that front. Moffa on the move. Phil Moffa kicking in the turbo and all the way down to the 15. That's how you take the steam out of the Seminoles defensively. Moffa finally chased down by Cypress the second. 59 yards. Offensive line for Clemson does a phenomenal job of establishing a hole that any of us could have run mm. through for some yardage. Phil Moffa takes it for long yardage. It's good hustle by Fintrell Cypress tracking him down. I'm not sure Shaheen Brown would have gotten him before yeah. the end zone, but Phil Moffa now over 100 yards. It's amazing what a long run will do for that average. <laughs> Stays in the game. Takes the handoff. Stays on his feet after absorbing that hit down to the 11-yard line. Kirkland made the stop on the play, a five-yard gain. Dabo Sweeney has talked about running Phil Moffa more. Only 10 carries a week ago. Stanford did a really nice job disrupting that run game. But those 18 carries, now 19 carries that Phil Moffa has are a season high. He didn't have to carry the ball a whole lot against App State and NC State. 16 carries against Georgia early in the year. They know as this thing goes, Phil Moffa and his ability to wear defenses down is going to be big for him. Second and five. They keep it on the ground. And this time Moffa maybe gained a yard on the play. He's been a real wonderful example for his teammates in the way that he approaches his work from day to day, week to week. Very fastidious, very detailed in his approach. Let's go down to Q. Look how slow Clemson is operating right now. Loitering in the huddle here. Soaking the clock, even with just less than eight minutes to go in the game. They're in no rush right now. You got Q in the SAT words. Hey, man, loitering is a perfect description. Thank you, Q. They run a little option into the boundary. You know where to go that time for Klubnik. Lions making the tackle from behind. Well defended, Roddy. It was, and if you're Dabo Sweeney, how comfortable do you feel sending your field goal team out when they've already, Florida State's already blocked two field goals? Well, here they come. They've made one from 26, had one blocked from 38. Consecutive makes after that, and then the last one blocked from 25. It's the left side of that field goal team that Clemson has had trouble with, but the pressure from Florida State is going to come to from the right side this time. Who's there? Knocks this one through from 31. And the lead back up to 13. With a little over six and a half minutes to go, the Tigers looking for their fourth win of the season, and Dabo move into the ACC history books. So many wonderful names have come through the gates of these stadiums through the years, and Dabo Sweeney on the cusp of passing Bobby Bowden in terms of all-time ACC wins. You think about Nicky Andrews, Myron Roll, The Fridge, Primetime, Deion Sanders. So many guys have been, so many luminaries who ended up in the Hall of Fame have been a part of this Florida State-Clemson rivalry. As we take a look at our playbook brought to you by Modelo. This is the latest chapter. It's really the gumption on that last drive shown by Brock Glenn who created plays with his legs, including on third and fourth downs, and then a delivery to Ja'Kai Douglas. Brought them with a chance to bring it to one score. They missed the two-point conversion, kept it at 10. This Florida State defense has been good when Clemson's gotten in the red zone. They've held Clemson to three of five in the red zone, only one of those a touchdown. Let's see if 
This Florida State offense can stack another win. Up top, Glenn incomplete down the far sideline intended for Danzy. Ball kind of hung up there for a little bit. It did it looked like Brock Glenn was kind of fading back and a little hand fighting up there. Yeah, and, and, and then on the back end, it's another example. Micah Danzy just, or excuse me, Makai Danzy just not able to, to reel it in. The ball is there. He's got two hands on it. Another missed opportunity. Second and ten coming up. Brock Glenn going through his progression and got sacked before he had time to throw it by T.J. Parker, one of their best pass rushers up front. That's his fourth sack of the season. Two weeks ago, remember, he had that jarring hit against North Carolina State's quarterback that caused a fumble in that game. He's a big timer. He is. He's a he is a next level player. Yeah. Only a sophomore still learning. The pass rush moves the craft of the game but man he is explosive and really fun to talk to man. caught up with him before the game last week. In Phoenix City Alabama. A lot of good ones out of there. And another sack. They're going to say that he might have been down first as this time it was Jaheim Lawson in there before. Brock Glenn had a chance to throw it and look who was there to make the catch. Q. No run afterwards, huh? On a clean hop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Always. I, man. I will tell you something about these these game balls. They're a little stickier than the ones you use in practice. I tell you that much. Uh, <laughs> these things are sauced up pretty good. Okay. How does it help the Florida State receivers all that much, Q? Yeah, Q uncovering the truth down there. Fourth and 15. Seventh punt of the evening for Alex Mastromano from Australia. It'll bounce and take a tiger bounce all the way out to the 46 yard line. Let's go back to the studio. All right, thanks a lot back here. 539 to go. First down and 10 for the Tigers. On the verge of getting their atonement from a season ago when they lost in overtime to the Seminoles. On first and 10, Antonio Williams turns the corner and picks up another first down all the way down to the 30 yard line. Here's what Dabo had to say up into different phases of the season and this is a great September set you up for a big October would set you up for that championship phase in November. That's what his team he's got his team focused on. Mafa between the tackles brought down at the 30 yard line you know I know that this Florida State fan base is disappointed right now and they do have a strong vast fan base. Florida State takes his second time out of the half. Seminoles are going to use one of their timeouts. You know, ran into a buddy of mine all the way out in Sacramento, California, Carmichael Dave, whose parents attended Florida State here back in the days of Fred Bolitnikoff wow. and two ardent, zealous supporters of the program who, despite the struggles, remain invested like a lot of these fans here, even though right now they're a little bit disappointed, but you know that's another part of the new ACC is that you get a chance to maybe see a Florida State go out to the West Coast at some point if you're an alum out in the Carmichael, the Sacramento, California area. Yeah, it's something like point. Jack and Barb. Shout out Jack and Barb. Yeah, how about him? These, these Florida State fans are obviously disappointed, and and rightfully so. I mean, the, the results have not been what you are accustomed to, and you should never accept them, but. This coaching staff didn't forget how to coach. It may not be this year that you see the hope, but it'll yeah. happen at some point again. Mafa within a yard of the first down. Last year's undefeated season was no fluke. Oh, well, <laughs> right. look, they were 10-3 the year before. Yeah. Yeah. 
and, and won six of their last seven. We're, we're 0 and 4, but go, before going 5 and 7 in the season before the 10 and 3 season. So, you know, Mike, Mike Norvell coached well at Memphis, and, and, and obviously it earned him this job. He's a, he's a, he was a really good coach there. He obviously built Florida State, and under him, I mean, it was it was tough to start. He had to rebuild yeah. this thing, but 10 and 3 in 2022, undefeated last year. You know, we can relitigate the playoff snub all we want, but 13 and 0 is 13 and 0. And the bottom has fallen out this season, yeah. but they've had a litany of things converge yeah. to create this. On the cusp of looking at one and five now with 448 to go. Next week, they'll be, pardon me, they'll have a week off and then play at Duke. Mafa as the Tigers disembowel that defensive front of the Seminoles. Clock still running. Florida State with no timeouts remaining. And their starting quarterback on the bench with that uh, huge cast like device on his arm, on his hand. And it, that's it's, it's something that. There are reports out there that he had surgery and, and you know if you've been around football teams long enough you know when guys show up with something like that on on his hand that's it, indicative of a surgery typically. Mafa is going to be stopped up near the line of scrimmage second second down to 10 you know the good thing about uh, the relationship between players on this Seminole team and there is still very good spirit is that DJ we saw him on the bench a moment ago has been to quarterback block Glenn the same that Mackenzie Milton was to that guy Jordan Travis a nice mentor and kind of older sage voice to lean on it, it's you need somebody to teach you how to how to play the game you know back in the days it was it was you know, quarterback after quarterback even in the 2000s it was Christian Ponder teaching EJ Manuel who taught Jameis Winston who you know, passed down that that knowledge of how to be a quarterback Mafa pounding away for about two yards. Who was, who was your vet? Who was your star choice? Who's now the oh man, running backs coach at Texas. Right, we saw him. Yeah, he was a senior, and you're a freshman, and you need somebody to, 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 just show you the way. Best piece of advice he gave you. I think I don't know if it was an individual individual piece. It was how he carried himself. Okay, he cared about everybody on the team, like Jordan Travis did. You know, like, I mean, you had it at Clemson on the other side with, with. Deshaun Watson being taught by Cole Stout, who was taught by Taj Boyd, and he passes it on to Kelly Bryant, who teaches Trevor Lawrence, who teaches yeah. you know, DJ Uyunglele when he was at when he was at Clemson, who was operated as a professional. Clemson takes its final time out of the half. A lot of people might forget that DJ was a part of two ACC championships at Clemson, which feels like a long time ago. But Jordan Travis, of course, with that standout season last year here at Florida State and mentorship, such a sometimes overlooked part of the entire equation, right? When you talk about younger players who come into a program and who they're looking at inside the locker room for direction and whose patterns they choose to emulate. It's a, it's a great point in, in in a transfer portal era you wonder how much of that is lost at yeah. times with guys moving from place to place you know the receivers that that they were counting on coming into this year at Florida State for example and Malik Benson you know a guy like 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 Jalen Lucas who was sort of that Swiss Army knife those guys didn't get a chance to see how how Keon Coleman operated in this offense so just wonder how much of that's lost. Bubnick hands it up. No, he keeps it. Uses Mafa as a blocker and took a little bit of a hit. I'm not sure that coach wants to see that right now, but sets up a fourth down. Clemson going to trot out the field goal. Too. They're going to take it down to the two-minute timeout. Yeah. 
I feel like Clemson fans are holding their breath anytime the field goal team trots <laughs> on the field at this point. Although this is again a situation where the right side of that field goal unit yeah. is going to be tested. The left side has been the uh, the one that's let the pressure through. Yeah, special teams has been uh, revealing tonight for the Clemson Tigers in an inauspicious way. We've hit the must. Might not like this scoreboard right now as the Tigers knock through another field goal. This one from 24 yards out. It's their seventh attempt tonight. And I, I met him. He was walking his, I think it was a labradoodle he had. He had did you recognize him? Or he did let you me, recognize no, him? Like, I stopped to talk to the, I miss my dog. So I was petting his dog and he said, have you ever Googled Florida State book guy? I said, no. I said, well, it went viral years ago when I was reading a book at the game. And he said, I think I'm going to try and get a ticket tonight for the Clemson game. And <laughs> brought the book. Last time, last time he had his shirt off, it was sunny. He was tanning. It hasn't been sunny all day long. No, no. It's just, it's just the thing. What book is it? It's not a very big one. No. Robert <laughs> He's into it. Yes, it will. I mean, it's it's uh, how I get more NIL money <laughs> for my squad. <laughs> Not sure who authored that. <laughs> 156 to go. From the two yard line, this is Samuel Singleton Jr. Still on his feet and out to the 23. Where it'll be first and 10, but. The prevailing storyline of the night for the Seminoles, unfortunately, has been some of these miscues, some of these pejorative, hurtful miscues. High snaps, several of them. Great catch only to be called back by a penalty. Missed opportunities downfield over and over. And the margin has been so slim, especially when you have a first time starter in Brock Glenn. Going to have another game where Florida State fails to reach 300 yards of total offense. On the other side, it hasn't exactly been a virtuoso performance for the Clemson Tigers either. No. That's seven field goals today. 500 yards of offense and only two touchdowns. And another drop, meanwhile, Roddy, by Landon Thomas this time. Look at the huge difference, the gap between total yards. That, that, is, that is indicative of how the game has gone yeah. rather than the score. Florida State's defense is actually buckled down in the red zone, forcing field goals. And they've allowed a ton of yardage, which you don't love, obviously, yeah. but Clemson's got a lot of room to improve. Next week, they'll be at Wake Forest. Take on the Demon Deeks. Pass complete, catch and run by Landon Thomas. Wake Forest got a win today, right? It did. They're going to this Clemson game and matchup next week on a positive note. Wake Forest has struggled up until that point, getting a win on the road at NC State. 118 to go. After Wake Forest, then Virginia up on the docket for the Tigers. That pass batted down to the line of scrimmage. Brock Glenn had a third pass, and the whistle has sounded. They're going to blow it dead. Running on the field is an incomplete pass. Looking at a fourth down and one now. As you look at the schedule, keep in mind that Clemson has now won eight of its last nine. Should they lock this one up in the next 109? Anything jump off the page at you when you look at their upcoming schedule? Well, yeah, there's only one ranked team, and that ranked team lost today to SMU. As mm -hmm. Louisville's going to fall out of the top 25. And you have the potential of, like, a Pittsburgh peeking in. Pittsburgh sitting there undefeated after its win today against, against North Carolina. But and there's not a lot of margin for error, because if you're a two-loss team that doesn't win an ACC championship, with not a single ranked win on the yeah. schedule, which is uh, which is possible if you drop one of these. It's Brock Glenn launches, throw the laser, completed about the 37 to Benson again. A couple of catches on this last gasp effort and drive.
Benson split to the bottom of your screen. Glenn over the middle, his intended receiver falling. That was the tight end, Williams. Why that touchdown catch a little bit earlier? There. You could see Brock touchdown. Glenn. You could see Brock Glenn a little frustrated. Amari Williams, the freshman, cleared the linebackers, and Brock Glenn wanted him to bend it back inside. That's something that an older player sees the split safeties, bends it back in. But the youth movement that I think we're going to continue to see from Florida State with guys like Landon Thomas, Amari Williams playing, Makai Danzi, Luane McCoy, it's true freshman getting the playing time. You're going to have some of those mistakes. 31 seconds to go. Glenn out of the shotgun. Complete to his tight end, Landon Thomas. And Thomas brought down at about the 37-yard line. How important were these reps for the young quarterback there tonight? They're huge, and he will continue to gain confidence and knowledge as they go. Because it, it feels like it's going to be his team for at least a little while. Here he is doing it himself, sliding in at the 26-yard line, and that's going to do it. The clock hits zero. And Clemson wins it to improve to 4-1, and one, the final score, 29-13. to 13. And with that, Dabo Sweeney usurps his mentor, Bobby Bowden, as the winningest coach in ACC history.